Visit thehonestcarpenter.com and get your home-related questions answered by a trade expert. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with Honest Carpenter Consulting in Raleigh, North Carolina. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to close out a hinge mortise. I took two doors off the open doorway here and the client wants me to get rid of this little pocket that the hinge leaves behind. I'm gonna do that by making something called a Dutchman. It's a little piece of wood that fills this gap and lets us turn this into a flush surface that just looks like part of the jam. So I'll show you how to do that. Some people make their Dutchman out of paint stirrers. Uh, it's not a bad option, but I've always found that they're just a little bit too thick. I like to go ahead and custom cut and rip my own uh, Dutchman, and you can do that out of pine or poplar. In this case, I'm gonna use a piece of plywood scrap that uh, came out of another project on the house. It's already painted. I'm gonna try to rip it to a perfect width to fill in the, mort uh, the mortises that we have. If you have to use a paint stirrer, it's okay. Uh, I think you're better off sanding it beforehand with a really low grit and then touch up sanding with a higher grit. But I'm gonna custom cut mine, so I'll show you how to do that next. To start this process, I uh, adjust the rip fence on my table saw. This is the DeWalt 747 table saw. It's a very good contractor grade table saw. Uh, here you can see that I produce just kind of like a thin sliver out of that plywood stock. I stop when I've just gone in a couple inches, take it over to my work table. And then I use a Stanley utility knife, very sharp, to just score a line across the face of that shortcut I made. I can just break this off and there I have a little test piece that I can use to find out if this thickness is going to work. So I take it inside and I hold the test piece up in my mortise slot and I just feel the outer edge with my finger. That felt a little high so I went and readjusted my table saw fence and cut another one, did the same thing that's a little bit thinner this time out of that plywood stock and here you can see it fits just much better. I also tested it up here at the top of the door. This is where the ball catches sit. It fits those mortises as well. So I go ahead and cut out the entire piece of my stock, the entire length. Uh, I do about half from one direction, then I flip it over and do the other half from the other direction. That way I don't have to catch it from the back side of the table saw. And this is what you wind up with, just this long flimsy piece of about 16th, 1 16th or 3 32nd inch stock and that's what I'm gonna cut my inserts out of. Uh, my inserts need to be about, I think like an inch and a half. Uh, so I make little marks with my tape measure and my pencil, and then I just use a straight edge like the paint stirrer to connect those marks. And then I go back to my Stanley utility knife to gently score through the line that I just used to mark with. And then I measure out the three and a half inches for the length of each mortise insert. Uh, go ahead and mark that line as well, score it, cut it with the utility knife. Then I use the edge of my table uh, as a hard edge to break the piece in half. And here you see I have my piece cut to length. Now I put these little dog ears on it with a utility knife. These will let the piece slide into the hinge slot uh, more easily and fit because the corners of the hinge slot are rounded over. I have 3 8 inch round overs. Uh, there you can see it fits quite well. It's nice and flush at the top and bottom and along the inner edge. Uh, and so now I know these inserts are going to work. I can go ahead and spread Type Bond 2 glue onto the back. And then I just rub it in a little bit with my finger. And if I have a little excess, I rub the excess onto the jam. Uh, it's always good to kind of have glue on both surfaces. And then I put the piece in place and line it up with the front edge. That's the most important part of this whole process. And here you can check it by just running your finger down the outer edge of the jam. You want to feel a flush edge between the jam and your new insert. And if that works, then I go ahead and uh, put a bunch of three and a half inch cuts and scores on my strip here and just start breaking them off into smaller pieces. I'm going to have uh, eight of them total, but only six of them are going to be three and a half inches like this. I put slightly smaller dog ears on all these because uh, it didn't quite fit as snug as I would have liked before. So here you can see I've put glue on all of them, slid them into place, and now I shoot them on with my rigid brad nailer just using 5 8 inch brads uh, with glue in the back. And I think I already ran just a little bit of caulk on this one. But you can see how they fit in there. I did two to three brads per insert and uh, just move up and down the jams, checking it for flush there. And uh, you can see them all installed here. It's all on the left side. It's okay if you have little gaps around the insert. We're going to fill those in. I already have a little bit of caulk on some of these. 
And uh, there you can see the ball catch inserts up above. And what we're gonna use to fill these spaces around the inserts is a product called plastic wood. Here you can see it's basically just a putty. I've got some on a one inch putty knife here. And uh, this is kind of a messy job, but it's pretty easy. You just trowel it into these gaps. You can brush off little excess parts on a hard piece of wood. Uh, it dries really fast and turns kind of flaky, so it's okay if it falls on the floor. Just don't step on it. You can sweep it up. And I just try to kind of try to trowel it from every angle here, and I pick up new little blobs as I run out or flatten it out on my knife. And you just work it in and uh, try to pull just a little bit of the excess off so you don't have too much uh, residual putty sticking onto your surfaces there. And when that's done, you can take either a 120 or 180 grit piece of sandpaper and just begin to sand off your excess putty. It's good to give it about 15 minutes to dry, uh, but the stuff sets up real quick. And once you've done the flat surface of the jam, uh, soften the outer edge of that insert as well. It's still a little bit sharp. You want to round it over. And it can help to take a little block of wood, wrap your sandpaper around it, and uh, it gives you a good broad flat surface to do your sanding with. Uh, so you can do it either way, uh, just by hand or with a little block like that. And here you can see my inserts are pretty much flush at this point. I can add a little more putty to any area that looks like I have a pock mark. But um, paint and caulk can help fill those things in as well. I've done everything around the jam. Now I just take some caulk and I run a bead at the seam between the casing and the edge of the jam. And this is to hide the edge of our insert. And I just tool it in with my finger uh, and kind of kind of try to catch any little gaps or areas, but you want to just create a smooth inner curve between the casing and the jam to kind of imitate the one that already exists. And then once you have all your inserts caulked, I like to go ahead and uh, paint or prime these areas because it's going to make imperfections stand out even more. If you need to go back with more putty, more sanding, you'll know. Uh, or more caulk, caulk. And if everything looks good, then you already have your first coat of uh, primer or paint on. And uh, here you can see mine starting to dry up already a little bit and everything's already starting to vanish. So that's how you fill in uh, hinge mortise slots using wooden Dutchman and wood filler. And uh, I'm going to touch up a few more spots here, but you get the idea. The, the more effort you put into it, the better it comes out looking. But this can really make those slots hide. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching. Come check us out at thehonestcarpenter.com. We're now offering live video consultations and phone consultations to homeowners nationwide. To get your most important home-related questions answered by a trade expert, just visit thehonestcarpenter.com.